Welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio this morning by Mr. Esam El Sagir, who is the chairman of Egypt Post. Mr. El Sagir, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about the fintech sector. How do you see the fintech sector reshaping digital financial services? Look, uh, I think with the current uh, um, e-services or, or digital services, you know, when wanted or requested by most of the customer without a fintech and without having a digital identity and digital profile for every customer will be it will never be able to give digital services or e-services or even just provide the service through a mobile. Uh, second, to, uh, we have a 4,000 branches distributed all over Egypt. Um, you require a lot of infrastructure to be able to link 4,000 and serve about 14 million walking citizens every month. Uh, you need to shorten the time. You need to have uh, all the services automated from the same counter to cut the time required by every customer. You need to have a digital identity. That's why using the fintech and technology and ICT going to a biometric identity for every customer. If you, if you work with most of your customer are category C or rural areas or remote areas, some of them they don't even have to sign or to write, then biometric identity will save a lot of time, will give them a trust to, 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 to use the services. It will require some uh, culture change to, to be able to do this. But I think we are on the, on the right map. So definitely technology and fintech will reshape the services for the next two, three years. And that's what will happen for the last two years as well. A huge change now for, from a normal standard uh, of, on the counter services to mobile and digital services. And definitely um, this will again play a big role in financial inclusions. It very much seems to be the future. I wanted to ask you, from your perspective, what uh, role can governments play to enhance usage of digital financial services at the national level? Look, in our stage in, 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 in starting a national database, we just said we need a uh, digital identity and we need a customer profile. We need to, th this will require a lot of a change in policies, rules, regulations, uh, to have a, a digital signature as an example. Uh, to uh, access uh, a citizen or a customer's database in different uh, governmental and sometimes you find this is a challenge uh, to share that um, citizen databases. This has to be done through the government. Uh, you need to change the regulation for people to start to use mobile. Government rules and services need to give a lot of incentives to, to um, uh, citizen to start use e-services or digital mobile ser or even to, to just have the financial services. Sometimes uh, the loss of trust of the financial services will keep um, people away, especially um, if, if, if you serve in the rural areas and everyone used to work in cash. Uh, they don't trust yet the government. I give you a very good story. Uh, we started to, to give a debit card to every customer and uh, to collect their at least pinch. We hand over a pinch for 7 million citizens. So an old lady, was, um, she got a salary of, or a pinch of 1,700 Egyptian pounds. She went to the ATM. We helped her a lot to, to use it. Uh, she was drawn the 1,000 and standing in the queue to collect the 7 Egyptian pounds because the uh, uh, ATM count and, uh, and seven Egyptian pounds who said, it's okay, next to said, no, how, how I know that it will, it will remain my account. I will stand in the queue to collect it. This requires some time for people to start against the trust of the system. No, it's okay. Even if you leave it, you will have an interest on it. Next month, she did not withdraw the uh, full amount in the first day of the month. She start to use it to pay through the supermarkets and, and uh, is it easy? No, it's not easy. It took some time, but I think we are on the right, right track. What will it take for the world's poorest people to prefer digital financial services over cash? And will digital financial services be enough for this to happen? 
Uh, uh, I mean, we cannot just say a digital financial services for, for this category of customers. You need to build or form the right, the right product for them. You need to build, uh, to build, as you said, the trust. You need to, to um, reach them and speak the same language. Sometimes you have the right product or you have a fantastic product, but uh, uh, you don't speak the same language of, of these people. That's why there is a lot of trust between a uh, customer or citizen and the post office. If you go to any small village, people speak the same language, they have the same culture. That's why you find a, a lot of trust. You find a lot of, it, they, they are families, they know everyone by, by names. So it's very easy for them to, to take the product and convince people that this is better. And uh, once we talk this channel, it is doing very well. So, so first we take them to, to the right, or create the right product, speak the same language, have everything very simple, very straightforward for them and easy to use. Today we just said our strategy for uh, financial inclusion, that is provide service to anyone, anywhere, anytime. To do this, it requires what we just, just said, that is you need to reach people everywhere, you need to speak the same language, you need to have the right product and in any instrument. You cannot just say, you guys, you need a very smart mobile phone to be able to do it. No, you have to see what type of phone actually they are using and you have to enable it. Well, thank you very much for sharing some of these valuable insights with us and we uh, look forward to catching up with you again some stage in the future. Hopefully. Sure, thank you.